Hello, I am Ronan Chris Murphy, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Ask Ronan Turbo Mondays. So first, I apologize. There hasn't been a new one of these in weeks, and it's because I've been involved in something really, really big and time intensive, and that is putting the final touches on my first big sort of premium online course, and it is Drum Recording Bootcamp. So after a decade of people asking me to make an in-depth course that people could take online, rather than in person, we finally got around to doing it. So check out drumrecordingbootcamp.com and get info about that. But more importantly than that, let's get to the free stuff. So let me grab my trusty new phone, which I got a new phone with better video to make it easier to knock out these uh, Turbo Mondays for you. And let's get into it now. All right, so the first one we'll dig into is from James. And James says, should he use a high pass filter on the master bus during mixing to get a better mix? A simple answer to that is I would say, no, don't do it. I mean, of course, do anything you want, but high pass filters are really, really powerful tools. I use them all the time. But I think at the mixing stage, you're much better off uh, looking at addressing any kind of issues you might wanna deal with for high pass filters at the individual element phase. I mean, it's not uncommon in mastering projects for me to use high pass filters on certain kinds of masters and productions, but I think it's better to leave it off the master bus because sometimes actually uh, it isn't better with a high pass filter, sometimes it is. But more importantly, the kind of things that you might look to deal with on a high pass filter, I think it's better to do that on the individual channels or save it all till mastering. All right, next up, uh, Roger writes, when you're mixing an album, do you aim for a mix that sounds best on a car stereo, computer, iPod, headphones, etc.? I'm finding that the mix on my latest record is sounding very different on each. <sighs> Welcome to the oldest dilemmas um, mixers have been working with or having to deal with for years and years and decades and decades, trying to find that sweet spot. Because as you notice, everything sounds different. You know, the the earbuds that come with your iPod are gonna sound different than some other earbuds from a different company. Your car stereo sounds different than my car stereo. So we never really have a target that we can shoot for. So one of the things you need to do is just over time, I mean, you wanna develop sort of skills and perspective that's gonna help you sort of understand how things are gonna translate. And for one kind of record, you might maybe tweak it a little differently than another kind of record. And also one of the things is, um, that's one of the reasons people kind of go to mastering to see if a mastering engineer can help mold the final mix in a way that's gonna, we call it translate well across multiple systems. But the most important thing before you have years and years of experience to be able to kind of make those calls, the best thing I could do is say, if you have albums you, you love where you listen to it in your car and wow, I love the way that sounds. You listen on your home stereo, it sounds great. You listen off your laptop speakers and you love the way it sounds. Really study those records and see what they've done because really great mixes translate really well. That's kind of one of the hallmarks of our greatest mixers is their mixes sound great on so many different things. And that's one of the reasons why Chris Lord Algae is so successful. Kind of even on the worst crummiest stereo in the world, uh, his records actually sound pretty darn good. So again, one of the secrets of his success. All right. Uh, so uh, Lucas asked, now that I've transitioned into a hybrid setup, how are you incorporating parallel compression in your workflow? And I think he means with analog hardware. There are tons of outboard compressors that don't have a blend wet knob. And so uh, what do I do? As as you know, the people who follow me, I, um, I got rid of my console almost a year ago. It's about the year anniversary. And I'm mostly super happy that I made the shift. It's helping me kind of serve my clients better and you know do a lot of the different projects I'm trying to juggle. But the thing I really miss is 100% phase accurate uh, audio. And that just doesn't really happen in the box. It's getting better and better um, in the box. And when you start to route out to analog components and do those to do parallel compression, the thing is, if your phase isn't rock solid, all these cool parallel compression tricks will actually just start hurting your audio, making things sound you know, weaker or less punchy. And that's kind of the reason why we are doing parallel processing in the first place. So 
you can actually go in and calculate uh, delay times for your particular converters and have the computer kind of go and do sample uh, delay compensation. But in reality, on really key important tracks when I'm doing it, it's a little bit time consuming. Uh, but what I'll do is I will actually print my audio back uh, into a new audio track. I'll run it out through my favorite EQs, compressors, bring that back in, and I'll actually go in and manually just line it up to be as phase accurate as possible. And one of the tricks I'll do is if, say for instance, I'm sending a vocal out to an analog compressor and back in, what I'll do is I'll put a little just audio spike, like a little tick at the beginning of it, send that out to the compressor and bring that back in. And uh, there we go. And, uh, and when that comes back in, it's gonna be a lot easier. Something with a, a tick, with a really sharp transient is gonna be easier to go back in and align that. So I'm gonna line that up so it's as in phase as possible. Check it across a whole range of different sounds to make it sound, make sure it sounds good. But yes, yeah, solid phase is so important when you get into parallel compression. And it's not a perfect case scenario, but going in and manually fine tuning things is how I deal with it on the most important elements. So there we go. It's good to be back with you for Turbo Mondays. Um, go to recordingbootcamp.com slash ask and send me a quick, send me some questions. I can't do these without your questions. And also if you wanna learn more about this new online drum course that we just launched, go to drumrecordingbootcamp.com. All right, thanks all, bye.